Hello and welcome back to what is the last Link and Loco episode with me in charge. Though there's not going to be any games, we're going to look through everything, basically. We're going to see what's happened uh, across like all the leagues, all the players and things like that. We're just going to have a look and um, hopefully you'll enjoy it. So I've gone forward the past few days uh, just to get past all the, all the new stuff. And we've got to this thing here, uh, the Lincoln overall best 11. Players have been inducted into it. This is the best 11 we have ever had in terms of like appearances, average rating, things like that according to the game. So, in goal, Nicky Reynolds. If you remember Nicky Reynolds, uh, he, he was a decent player for us. Played for us for uh, a couple, only four seasons actually in the end, uh, which seems a little bit low actually. But just from a million pounds, signed for from Reading. Uh, played, I, I failed to see how he's in the, in the team of the year overall. He played two full seasons with us, had half a season there. Played four games there when someone got injured, then went to, uh, to Everton for two seasons probably played more games there to be fair so I mean I won't get too cross about it but I, I do feel that's a little bit undeserved but then again who else would go there I don't know I think we've got a pretty decent back four though Masovic, Benteke, Patino and Valerie Masovic will start off with him what a man he was now plays for Bayern Munich of course we sold him to there for 18.75 million it hasn't really made an impact there not really played much at all but came to us for four years bought him for 9.25 million and was an absolute rock for us at left back for quite a while um really solid player i loved having him there benteke what a player he was we sold him recently to atletico was it to atletico we sold it to i didn't realize it was atletico so actually we may have played against him in the final i didn't even notice but he's played 30 games there sold for 30 million again he was with us for four seasons as well uh, we made a £10 million loss on him, but to be fair, we, we did spend a lot of money on him to get him in the first place because he was that good at the time. Had four really good seasons with us, to be fair, and um, probably would have played a lot this season as well, considering the amount of injuries we had and things like that. Uh, Patino, we know all about, still at the club, still a fantastic player. Look at him, he's been at the club for uh, five seasons he has, so it breaks the mould of four season players. But again, we paid £8.5 million for him, and he's got better every single season he has played. Uh, to the point where he, I think he's our vice captain, maybe. He's an absolute rock and I love him to bits. And then, of course, Jan Valerie at right back. We never really found a decent right back, to be fair. But Jan played for us for uh, four seasons in our championship side. Uh, we won the championship. Uh, and then played for us for three seasons in the Premier League as well. And after that, he went on to various different clubs not really making much of an impact having a bit of a journeyman career i've got to say but we made a nice bit of profit on him signed for 300k sold for 6.5 million so good business we looked to the midfield then and i think the longest serving he's not had the most caps but the longest serving player we've had is liam Coyle now played at Swansea but of course we had him for one two three four five six seven seasons in the end basically most of them were on loan from Liverpool uh, and then we finally signed him for 3.3 .3 million when he didn't play at all for Liverpool in the 23-24 season um, we signed him in the January actually didn't we and then he sort of made a bit of an impact but uh, it was a fantastic player for us right from the championship I think it was our first season of the championship we got him on loan um, and became a solid player for us into the Premier League was a real, real top quality player and still is, to be fair, still doing very well at Everton and Swansea and things like that. So um, it just didn't quite fit the mould for us anymore. We didn't quite need that um, CDM role anymore. So that's why he had to go in the end. Now, controversially, uh, Jalapeno not in the starting lineup here. They've gone for Mertens and Diaz instead. So we'll start with Diaz, of course. What a man he is. I absolutely adored Diaz. He had some absolutely incredible seasons. He was here for one, two, three, six seasons. Was really, really good. Uh, most of these seasons, I've got to say, average rating wise. I mean, this season here was, was pretty poor. He didn't really play the first two seasons, uh, and we've kind of bit on the fence about him. Then we start playing the next season. He did pretty well, ten assists there uh, in a pretty good, pretty good season. But it was the next season where he got ten goals in the league, but twenty five goals overall, eighteen assists from attacking field position. That was the season that made him. He was absolutely incredible there, uh, and then sort of declined a bit after that to be fair and to get 24 million pounds for him was an absolute steal i don't know how brighton paid that why they paid it i don't know uh, but they paid 24 million pounds for him when he wasn't worth it at all um he's had an all right career there but really he, he's a bit past it now for the premier league mertens on the right hand side again he's been with the club for quite a while as well one of the best midfielders in the world i've got to say uh again four seasons one for 30 million pounds and he's been pretty decent as well with that sort of carillo position bombing up and down the pitch of course he's refusing to sign a contract still um he, he's, he's gonna go but we're not gonna be here to see him go so we'll, we'll brush over him a little bit i've got to say 
Morala on the left wing is, is of course, the man we've got to talk about. He has been absolutely incredible this season. He's played for three seasons now. Uh, the first season, we, we were ha happy with him. The second season, we weren't quite sure. We thought we might sell him, actually, in the summer we've just had. Uh, but good job we didn't, because he scored 30 goals this season, 41 games. So, pretty good going. 21 assists as well. He's been a fantastic player, and I'm glad we kept him, because, to be fair... He has really won us a lot of games, to be fair, this season. We, we wouldn't have won the Champions League without him. We wouldn't have done so well in the Premier League without him. So I'm glad we kept him. On the other side, uh, Mark Hall is there. Not Lukasic. Lukasic on the bench, but Mark Hall is there. Um, he is, quite frankly, one of the players I'm most proud of in this entire save. Uh, he came through as a Lincoln youth player. Um, didn't make any appearances in his first season. Five in the next season, then started to break into the first side uh, before this season becoming literally one of the best strikers in the world. 40 goals in 43 appearances, 27 assists as well overall. 7.85 average rating. Incredible performances from this year. He is uh, he won quite a few awards as well. Again, he's he was like three-time golden ball player or what is it? European golden boy, that's it. He won it three times in a row, which kind of shows how good he is. And he's a Lincoln youth player through and through Lincoln and I'm happy for him 15 appearances for England 19 goals that's incredible stuff and then of course the man up front I think probably my favorite player throughout this entire save hammer time what what a man he is what a man uh, he's been with us quite a long time we bought him from Freiburg for 12 million pounds and he has just scored goal after goal after goal uh, this season I think it was or was it this season this season yeah we scored 22 goals in the league but 54 overall he won the uh, European, not the European, he, got, he probably won European best player, but he won the best player in the world. He got the Ballon d'Or that season, which was absolutely incredible. Uh, 54 goals in 50 appearances. Pretty good going, I've got to say. There's a couple of honourable mentions as well on the bench as well. Barish Erzer is the other goalkeeper that probably should be there instead of Reynolds, I've got to say. Uh, Roshan Williams is still going. He was there for a long time. He was a great player for us. He played for Southampton for, a, for more time than us, actually, now. Uh, spent more time there after going for £25 million. Pounds. was a decent player for us. When we signed him in the Championship, it was a real statement of intent at the time. Like, he should have not been coming towards him in the Championship, but uh, a lot of money in wages. Persuade him to come, basically. Uh, Kaufman's there, of course. Le Cassic, the the real MVP, the OG wonder kid. He came through years ago in the Championship and was, like, promised to be one of the best players in the world. We had clubs bidding, like, £15, £20 million pounds for him as a 16, 17-year-old. And it was like, what? Uh, okay, probably wasn't quite 15, 20 million at 16 years old. It was probably more like three, four, five million. But uh, we never let him go. And perhaps that did squander his development a little bit. Perhaps if he'd gone to other clubs and, and played in better youth systems and things like that, he may be a better player now. But he's he's played a lot of games for us, 150 games for us, 23 goals, 37 assists in all that time. Uh, in the league, that is. If we look at total overall, I don't know what that would be, to be fair. Uh, but he's had some very, very good seasons, to be fair. And I think he's everyone's favourite player. He's one of my favourite players, actually. In fact, he might be my favourite player ahead of Hammer Time, but I think everyone else absolutely adores him in the comment section. So, Lukasic, what a man. Jalapeno's there as well. George Byers there as well. He made 206 appearances for us in the end, George Byers. What a man he was. Uh, currently plays for Rangers now. How many seasons did he have with us? One, two, three, four, five. Only six seasons, but made 200 appearances. That is some good going, to be fair. Uh, he was right back in League 2 we had him. Uh, we had him on loan. Oh no, we say that. I think we got him on loan just as the League Two season finished. So technically, it says he was on loan then, but he wasn't. So in five seasons, 200 appearances is good going. League One, the Championship, the Championship, the Championship, and the Premier League. So came with us all the way, basically. I think he's a bit of an unsung hero, or a little bit forgotten maybe. But what a player he was. He went on to Norwich on a free, and then went on to Rangers. But I've got a special place in my heart for George Byers. If if you're in the lower leagues, at the start of your save, try and sign him. We'll get him on loan. And then my last player down there, Wilfred Thomas. 79 appearances, 64 goals. That is a fantastic little ratio, to be fair, actually. That's better than I thought it was going to be. Mark Cole's got 83 and 109, and Hammer Time's got 203 and 254. So, pretty good ratios. But that is the overall best 11. Uh, I would go through the entire thing, but we've done that before, and uh, there's more things I want to look at and talk about as well. So, this is the graph, then, of, of, of how we've done. Now, uh, we took over here. Well, here, this is when we were in the National League in uh, last season in real life. Uh, and then we took over and we came second in League Two, which was pretty good. Instant promotion. We then went into League One and uh, won the playoffs very dramatically. 
Uh, we just snuck into the playoffs. Uh, I think we were pretty safe for it, if I remember rightly. And then we dropped out with a few games to go, then got back in it on like, the last day of the season, then went on to win it, which is fantastic. Uh, then had two seasons in the championship, which was pretty nice. Uh, 19th, 10th, and then we got promoted uh, as champions that season. Then we've had a steady increase in the Premier League. 16th, 11th, 8th, 7th, 4th, 1st, and then 2nd this season, which is a slight decline. But of course, we can't complain too much, can we? Along the way, we've won a Community Shield, a Carabao Cup, uh, an FA Cup, and of course, the Champions League as well, which is why the season and the series is now finishing. So if we have a little look at the uh, the overview of things, then, a little overview uh, of what's going on in terms of records, our highest position, first in the Premier League, 17th in the National League isn't what I've done, so we can't count that too much. But 105 points in one season, I think that was the year we won the Championship, 105 points there, which is pretty cool. Uh, we won 33 in a season one year. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, Hammer Time's got the most goals in the season with 54, of course, and he's got the highest average rating of 7.82. That's pretty pretty good going, to be fair. Jimenez scored the fastest goal 16 seconds into a game. Jimenez, a player we sort of forgot about. He has done so well this year at West Ham. 17 goals, 8 assists uh, in 28 games, 7.62 average rating. He's the reason they're in the Champions League, I've got to say, for next season. Yeo got 29 assists one season as well. That's... That was actually fun. That was the year he won Golden Boy, didn't he? And we got him on loan. Um, we didn't even think we needed him. And then we started playing him and he was sick. And that's why he is such a legend. That's why he's come to the... That's why we love him so much, Brad Yeo. He just came out of nowhere to win European Golden Boy and get 29 assists in a season. It was crazy, wasn't it? Haug, most clean sheets. Fair. Haug was a decent player, I've got to say. Um, he, he wasn't premiership quality, which is why he never played for us. But that year we won the championship. He was absolutely incredible. 22 clean sheets as well. That is... Pretty good going, I've got to say. Um, most games won in a row, 13. Pretty good going, that. That was last season, I believe. Last season, I think. Uh, 18 last season. Uh, all these other ones are like before I was manager. And then most games without conceding, five. Uh, that was a good eight years ago, though. So um, that's pretty pretty hard to beat, actually, looking at that. Oh, the trans... Right, let's look at these biggest transfers then. Right. Uh, we spent £44,000 on Danny Rose in that first season before we... Started spending 100, or basically 200,000 there, another 200,000, 300,000. Uh, then didn't spend anything that season for whatever reason. And then it jumps from 300,000 to 12 million for Hammer Time. Uh, 3.4 million for Pershers. What a. He's, he's still going, bless him. He's still going. He had one season with us uh, and was absolutely atrocious, basically. So uh, good job he never came back. 40 million for Benteke. Uh, 43 for Morala. 43 again for the Butcher. Then. <laughs> 65 for that Belgian chap, and then 87 for Oriol, which is, I mean, it was worth it in the end because he won a Champions League, although he was injured for it, so maybe maybe that isn't quite so justified. We have received quite a lot of money as well, though, to be fair. Uh, a million there for Maxime Darpino. What are, how is he still going as well, to be fair? Uh, we signed him on a free transfer, then sold him for 1.5 million to Swindon for some reason. Uh, that was a fantastic free transfer in terms of making profit from that and things like that. Uh, Connor Glenford was a youth player we had at the time. Sold him for 1.5 million to Crystal Palace. He went on to do nothing, basically. A real, real waste, to be fair. In fact, he's, he only just left Crystal Palace. He's been on loan every single season, just about. And has gone to uh, Leighton Orient on a free. And then we get to spend some big money. Chummer. Oh, what a player he was as well, to be fair. He was fantastic. Four seasons with him. He scored a lot of goals. Was instrumental in us getting promoted to the Premier League. Uh, we sold him for 16 million. Then Rashawn for 25. Angel Gomez for 50. Uh, Luis Ferrer for 28, Despacito for 38, and Jimenez for 45. So a lot of money being spent there as well. I mean, obviously, most goals is interesting as well. You know, we go back to here. David Hanan, 24. What a, you know, he was, he was a weird player, David Hanan. I think we had him on loan, didn't we? And then rather than join us again the next season on a free transfer, he went to, to Belgium and then literally has not scored many goals since. I think, in fact, he's only scored 34 goals since uh, since he left us. And that's only 12 more than he scored for us. Um, so, I mean, it's it's a downward career for him, hasn't it? Terry Ambrose, uh, he was pretty decent. Well, on loan from Man City, he's retired though, so not too interesting. But 26 goals. Ashley Fletcher, he was a fantastic player as well. On a free transfer. Oh, someone sign him up, please. Because he was, I mean, looking at these stats, that's probably not actually that great, really. But he was very, very good. Obiolore, also there. 21 goals. Chummer there, 15 and 23 goals. And then Hammer Time scores loads. And then Wilfred Thomas and the Mark Call come into it as well. So... I mean, some decent goal scorers there. Now, I suppose there's loads I could show you as well, but I'm aware that we're probably nearly 20 minutes into this video. I need to want to show you some more things. Uh, I want to show you, like, the entire tables and things like that. So, obviously, we, we know what this Premier League table looks like. We see it all the time and things like that. But what's going on 
in the championship. Now, I would show you like more countries as well, but I've only got the English leagues loaded up. So it's only going to be the English leagues that I'm showing you. But here's the championship. Uh, some pretty interesting things going on here. Uh, Fulham, Norwich promoted and things like that. But who else is in here that's not shouldn't, or not ordinary, wouldn't be here in real life at the moment, things like that? Um, I mean, Coventry are there. But other than that, actually... Uh, Swindon, I mean, how long has Swindon been in the in the championship? Only only recently, so maybe Sw Swindon and Coventry are, are basically the two sides that shouldn't be there, but are there. Not really too dissimilar to real life, actually, if I'm honest with you. Um, really not too dissimilar to real life. Wolves have never, ever gone out of the championship. Although they have run away with the championship this year in real life, they, they've been woeful recently, absolutely woeful, and just mid-table championship side, really. Right, League One is where it gets a bit more interesting, I've got to say. There's a few more interesting sides in here. Chesterfield are here in sixth place. Uh, they've just been uh, relegated from uh, League Two, obviously, in real life. Luton are there as well. Grimsby Town are there as well. That's a bit of a weird one. In fact, actually, they got to a player final once in League One, uh, but lost the player final. I do remember that, actually. Um, who else are down here? Uh, Billericay Town. This is, yeah, I keep seeing these guys around. Billericay Town, they've had a big meteoric rise in, in football manager. They've really risen up in League in League One. Got relegated once, but bounced straight back up. So, Billericay Town, probably the, the fastest and biggest growing side in this save. Uh, County there as well, which is pretty interesting. Uh, although, they, they might be there in real life, although that would be at Lincoln's expense. So, hopefully, they're not going to be there in real life soon. Uh, but other than that, again, uh, Tranmere there as well, actually. That's an interesting one. Tranmere, they're in the National League right now as well. So a few more interesting things thrown up there. League 2 is where things may get even more interesting. Nottingham Forest have just been promoted back from League 2. They've had a, an abysmal time. Literally, they just keep going down and down and down. Um, they've just been promoted once again, though. So so good for them, I suppose. Leighton Orient also just been promoted back. Bristol City there as well. That's an interesting one. They've dropped down quite a bit as well. Uh, Dagman Redbridge back in the Football League. So are York. They've had a good rise as well. Uh, Boston United have done pretty well. Boston United uh, climbing up the tables the past few seasons into League Two now, along with Dulwich Hamlet, who I know have just been promoted into the, uh, the National League South this season. They have done it in, in Football Manager as well, getting into League Two just last season, actually. So fair play to Dulwich Hamlet, doing a pretty decent job of keeping their League Two survivable. Eastleigh have just been relegated. Newport County there, Macclesfield are there as well. Peterborough down there struggling as well, which is interesting. And uh, there's two sides that I think still not doing particularly well. If you're going to the National League now, uh, they might be here, but I know they were further down at one point. And in fact, that they're not. I mean, interesting stuff for this anyway. Oxford are there anyway. Uh, they're finishing in fourth. They haven't dropped below the Vanarama National League. Uh, but Wickham are there as well. Hemel Hempstead have gone up a little bit as well. Port Vale have dropped down quite a bit. Uh, Harrogate Town have gone up quite a lot as well, to be fair, recently. Uh, although, actually, they've just been promoted now, so maybe they haven't gone up quite so much as I thought they had done. Uh, Yeovil just missing out on relegation, or just surviving relegation, rather, I should say. Uh, low stuff there as well, older shop, things like that. So, nothing too major here. Uh, it's when we get to the National League North. National League North, where are they? Scunthorpe United have uh, had an abysmal time, basically. They've been stuck in the Vanarama National League North for quite a while now. Relegated, stayed there, promoted, relegated, and obviously not been promoted again. So they're having a bit of a torrid time at Old Scunthorpe. Really not being very good. And I believe there was someone else down here that wasn't, or well, shouldn't be down here, really. I think it could have been like Walsall, but I, I could be lying to you there. No, it's Doncaster. What want to talk about Doncaster right there. Both like very similar places, Scunthorpe and Doncaster, not far from each other. Uh, but again, Doncaster also struggling, which is uh, an interesting thing there. Uh, but surely being promoted. Merrith Town also being promoted as well. Salford are still down there. Interestingly, Chelmsford in Vanarama National League North. They're, they are very, very far south. So I'm not quite sure why they're in the, the National League North. But, you know, football manager's weird sometimes. And then in the National League South... Uh, anything surprising there? Not not particularly really talkier down there, but they're probably going to end up down there. In fact, they are down there now in real life, aren't they? Uh, Forest Green, always nice to see them drop down a couple of divisions as well. No one ever likes them. Uh, I, I'm just not a fan of them as a team, really, in real life or in Football Manager. So I'm happy to see them down there. Of course, it's, it's not too important, but past winners of the FA Cup, of course, we won it once. Runners up once as well, but a few different sides winning that. Uh, same thing with the League Cup. We've been runners up three times and won it once as well. Man United winning it quite a few times. In fact, no one really out of the ordinary winning it apart from us, of course. Uh, Community Shield once again, just it's just Man United basically, and then others once or twice as well. Uh, Checker Trade Trophy is probably more of an interesting one there as well. Uh, a couple of under 23 sides winning it, but uh, Wigan, Plymouth, Chesterfield, Cardiff, Exeter, Swindon, and Bristol City and Peterborough winning it as well with uh, under 23 sides runners up a few times as well. Uh, and the FA Trophy, who's won that? 
again, no, I was kind of hoping someone like from like real far down would win it, but apparently not. So uh, not too much to worry about there. Right, so we've looked over everything, and um, now now it's time. Now it's time to uh, that's that's resign. I want to retire. How do, how do I retire? There we go. My profile retired. Do you want to resign as manager of Lincoln and retire from football with immediate effect? Yes, please. Wow. There, there we go. It's done. It's actually done. Can we actually look at Lincoln City again now? Yeah, we, we can. No, no one's the manager. Oh, no. Everyone's nickname has been changed. Oh, that's... I didn't save the game before I retired as well, so I can't do anything like that. That's oh, that's actually annoying me a little bit, but... Oh, well. At least you know what Hammer Time's real name was, if you if you can't remember what it was. That was his real name, Alexander Achhammer. Uh, but we, we couldn't really pronounce that, so we went for Hammer Time instead. So there's going to be one more video of this. Uh, I'm going to do like five years in the future, see what happens to Lincoln City and, and the players, see if they go on to win more leagues and things like that, or will they just get relegated again a couple of times? Who knows? But we're going to do that uh, in what is going to be the last ever Lincoln Loco video. So join me for that next time. And so if I guess for one last time, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you do drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if any around here, and I'll see you next time for the last ever Lincoln Loco.